Sajal Baru's father, Subal Baru, abandoned his first wife and his son that he had with her, only to marry another woman, who was Sajal's mum. However, after a few years, Sajal's dad would take him and go back to his first wife and his eldest son. And that would be the last time that Sajal would see his birth mother. After his arrest, Sajal recounted how often he'd be burnt with cigarettes and hot irons in his childhood by his stepmother and his older stepbrother. But Sajal would get his revenge and thus lay three dead bodies in what is one of the most gruesome crimes in Kolkata. Just a disclaimer, this case is... Just a disclaimer, this case is... On the night of 22nd of November 1993, Sajal and five of his friends, all aged between 16 and 17, arrived at his house in North Kolkata. Finding that his stepmother was alone, the group gagged her so she wouldn't be able to make any noise or call out for help. They would then tie her up to a chair and waited for his father and stepbrother to return. They would come home shortly before midnight and would have the same treatment happen to them. Sajal and one of his friends, a fellow named Ranjit, initially tried to murder the three victims by strangling them to death. However, they only managed to kill the stepmother that way. And since strangulation wasn't working for his dad and stepbrother, they devised another method. They instead stabbed and killed Sajal's stepbrother and his dad and then hacked their bodies into pieces. After committing the crime, Sajal told his friends, clean up the murder weapons using mustard oil, and then they would neatly organize them on the kitchen table. Now exhausted from what they had done, I mean, this whole murder spree took them three hours to accomplish. Sajal would go to the refrigerator, he'd put his hand in, take out some Bengali sweets, which is also called mishti, and they would then proceed to eat them and just relax and unwind after a three hour session of killing. Once the boys were done eating, Sajal would reach into his pockets, take out some money, then leave it on the kitchen table as if he was paying for the food. This was something that he saw in a TV program and he decided to use it. Sajal's friends would then proceed to leave the house. However, before they left, they would tie up Sajal to a chair and gag him so to give the appearance that he was also a victim in this murder spree. Initially, he was able to avoid suspicion, at least that's what he thought. However, the Kolkata police became suspicious since he didn't show any signs of struggle or had any injuries to himself. And upon interrogation, Sajal would confess to committing the murders. Sajal would then be convicted and the Kolkata High Court had reduced his sentence to life imprisonment because of his age. Initially, Sajal had been serving his sentence at Dundon Cantonment Prison, but he was moved to the Minapur Central Jail in July 2000 due to administrative problems. While serving his prison sentence, Sajal showed signs of an alleged kidney ailment, and so he was then transferred to the Kolkata National Medical College and Hospital for Examination. On the 15th of September 2001, he escaped from the hospital and was at large until early 2003. On the night of the escape, Sajal would host a beer party and he'd invite the two constables that were guarding him at the hospital to prevent him from escaping and he offered the constables the beers. Sajal had his girlfriend sneak in the beers so the constables didn't actually suspect anything. On that night, however, the constables would take their beer bottles, take a sip, and this would cause them to fall asleep. See, so Sajal had spiked their drinks with sleeping pills and watched them fall asleep. He then walked out of the hospital unhindered, literally just got up, walked out. After escaping from the police, he emailed a friend in Mumbai and he fled there. He then got married over there and stayed there for a few years. And then he would leave, returning to Calcutta, leaving his wife in Mumbai. He committed a number of crimes under various aliases. Police officers of the Pulbagan and Manaktala police station of Calcutta were nearly successful in recapturing Sajal in early 2003. After they were able to trace his girlfriend and they set up a sting operation to recapture him. However, Sajal just wouldn't show. Um, so they were unable to recapture him. Sajal would get wise to the plan the police made and he would then take refuge in a local criminal known Hathkata Bishu, which is uh, another way of saying uh, one-handed Bishu. I guess his one of his arms were cut off, so that might be the reason why he had that 
name. He would work for him in Lake Town, Kolkata and under the alias Kamal. So now Sajil was known as Kamal and he was responsible for any robberies that happened in the Kolkata area. As the search for Kamal intensified, Sajil or Kamal, the name that he took, migrated to Jamboni in West Midnapore district to work for Rajiv Metti, a local criminal that lived over there. However, in late February 2003, a criminal who went by the name of Sheikh Raju was arrested for petty theft in the Jamboni area of West Mindapore district and was brought to the Mindapore Central Jail. On 16th of May 2003, after masquerading as Sheikh Raju for almost three months, this criminal was identified as Sajil Baru by the jailer who had met him earlier when he was serving his life sentence at the Alipur Central Jail in Kolkata. On being recaptured, Sajil would be sent to the Presidency Jail in Dum Dum. Here he formed a network with the terrorist Aftab Ansari, the prime accuser of the 2002 terrorist attack on the American Center in Calcutta, and Deboshish Chakraborty, a criminal convicted of killing his girlfriend and attempting to kill his own mother. Soon after the criminal nexus was discovered, Sajil would be shifted back to the Alipur Central Jail. Devashish Chakraborty was moved to the Mindapur Central Jail, for which he escaped on the 28th of May 2005, only to be recaptured two days later. After serving some time in jail, Sajil was released in August 2010. However, in June 2011, he was arrested again on charges of robbery. Sajil was found guilty and was sentenced to imprisonment. He was then released from prison in 2017 and since then no further news of him has come out. So the assumption is that he's left his criminal past behind and is living a straight and narrow life or just hasn't been caught yet. Okay guys, well that's going to do it for today. Thank you for listening. If you haven't, subscribe already. It really helps us out. Until tomorrow, take care.